Good morning guys, welcome back to Barham Engines. Right, first of all this morning, before we go any further, as you can see I've completed the diff for, this, for the kit car. I'm not going to do the, the sort of ins and outs and, and the build of this. If you go on YouTube you can see enough videos of, of people rebuilding these diffs. Um, to be honest with you, it's the first diff I've done. I wasn't familiar on all the, the preloads and this, that, the other. I've done three or four gearboxes in the past, so I sort of know how to do preloads on, on various taper, different tapered bearings. Um, so what I've done, guys, is I've took advice from, from you viewers. Um, the last time I did a video saying, please comment on you know any information you can give on this diff. Um, and very kindly, quite a few people did actually, um, so I've took various bits of information off, off the emails and um, yeah, managed to set this up absolutely pucker really. So there we have it. The only thing I've got to do is push the, the seals in now. Uh, we've sealed all the back up. What I did in a nutshell was um, obviously got my DTI on the, on the crown wheel um, and it's got, we've got about 10th hour backlash, which apparently is, you know, because of sort of, heat growth and all that, that's about what you're meant to have. So turning the pinion, absolutely fine. I did go for um, the solid spacer on the pinion shaft there. Um, as you can see, this is, the, this is the, the washer here. So what I did, I didn't do the usual crush this down um, and measure it because I know these do spring back. So I think that's a little bit vague. I've probably done it a little bit more um, as an engineer would think really, whether it's the right way or the wrong way, I don't know. But what I did was I put this spacer in, which is clearly bigger. And then what I did, obviously there was some end flow with this in. So that's with the nut done up. So what I did was put a DTI on the end of the shaft um, and measured the distance it was going in and out which was about 30 thou. So then I took this out, measured this spacer, and I made a, a spacer, a solid spacer, about 30 thou plus three thou. Um, so we've basically got about three thou preload on there. And when I put the gauge on the end, we're getting about 20 foot inches um, to turn that. So that worked out absolutely perfect. And I do remember when I did my gearbox in my Sierra, my T5 gearbox, that was pretty much the same. I ended up with about the same and I'd, I'd give it about three thou preload on that taper bearing. So really happy with that, feels absolutely silky. As I say, we've got the 10 thou of backlash on the crown wheel. Um, so yeah, really happy with that guys. Got new bearings in, just got to whack these seals in and then we're all done. So really grateful for your help on that. Thank you very much indeed. But there was one little difficulty we came across. Um, yesterday, I actually stayed on because we're so busy. I stayed on after work and I was here till about seven o'clock at night um, getting all this thing prepped up. I went to put the diff into the case in and I come across a problem. Um, and it wasn't until I got home and started reading on some of the forums and what have you then that this could be a reason. So this is what I ended up doing. So all I'm doing here, guys, is machining side of the, the diff casing to get the new diff in because we are literally about two mil about two mil out and getting the diff in so what I've done is I've took two mil off each side apparently yesterday when I had a quick look on the internet yeah sometimes you do have to do this so you can see there two mil out and that should slide in nicely now right so today's video guys is going to be based pretty much around that transit engine, the one that we got out of this box here. The idea was really we, we sort of get that, get the old transit engine in and all we had to do was really swap the sump, but ain't quite work like that. Right guys, as you can see here, we've got the two transit motors. So this is the old one from the customer. This is the new one that we had in that box over there that we bought brand new, genuine engine. Um, so when they sent the engine over, the new one is a transit engine um, but it's going in a Ford Ranger. So this is the engine out of the Ranger, the old one, not 100% sure what's, to happen, what's happened with it, but in the sump was some horrible silver oil. Um, so 
basically they told us that we had to change, I thought it was an engine mount or something like that, and the sump. Um, but it's actually a little bit more than that. So it's actually the sump. This plate here that holds the oil um, pickup pipe and the oil pump, the oil pumps are the same. So basically we've had to change that, which means taking off that cover. Fortunately, that is not gooied on from standard. So you can get that off easy enough. This is the one with the sort of inbuilt rubber seal. Um, so fortunately you don't ruin that. It's got a genuine, obviously a genuine Ford front cover, and we've managed to pry that off very gently without damaging it, because obviously you can see it's very, very thin. Um, so we've managed to lever that off. Probably took me about 20 minutes to get that off, but we have managed to get it off, because I think a genuine one is about 80 quid. Otherwise, we'd have had to replace that. So obviously take the cover off, um, that plate off the back, and we've got to take all, we had to take all this off. Now, what's different from what I can see I think there's a mount here um, and on the new one, this is obviously the old one that we've cleaned up and painted, but on the new one, it's got a mount here instead. You've got this cutout in the back, which the new one, um, so the Transit doesn't have, but the Ranger does. This lug here is down the bottom as opposed to that one, which is up the top. A good couple of hours work to change all this. And um, as I say, fortunately, we haven't damaged that front cover. Just bear that in mind, if you ever wanted a, a transit engine or a Ranger engine, uh, we can get them brand new, but it does come as a transit and it's slightly different. A little bit more work than we expected on that. Right, so this block here is the CVH 1600 block that I bored this morning. Um, standard bore is 80 mil. I've gone to 80.5. And as you can see by this gauge here, I've done it to small hand on zero and the big hand on the zero. So. This particular bore, we're half a thou over. We've got another, I normally go, as I've said to you before, I normally go about half a thou over what it should be. So I've got about a thou to come out the bottom and about a thou at the top. So it's consistent. So we've got our fine stones in. Um, I've, give, I've honed this out already, but I've just let it cool for sort of 10 minutes. So, very very light cut at the minute just wait till the see the oil's coming through now put a little bit more of a cut on and we're just going consistently up and down because we know it's cutting consistent so we don't need to take more out the bottom or more out the top so you can see now we're we're on size down the bottom oh, sorry at the top and we're at zero on the bottom, so we need to take another half a thou out of the bottom there. And then we'll, what we'll do is, because we've had to take a thou, usually if I maybe had to take a couple of tenths out, I, that will do, but I shall let it cool for another 10 or 15 minutes after this. Just make sure it hasn't closed up. So, half a thou at the top. About a quarter of a thou at the bottom now, so we're getting there. A little bit more at the bottom. Now I know I've showed you before honing these blocks, but I like to think if we do it several times here, there, and every couple of weeks, it um, eventually sinks in, and you learn something new every every time. So there we go. We're sort of half a thou on top and bottom now so we're going to leave that one to cool go on to the next one so as boring as this looks guys what I'm doing here is just removing removing all the old silicon from around the outside edge here where the front cover was uh, what I should do in a minute is go at it with a soft a sort of soft brush on the whizzy wheel but I just want to remove all the excess just to make sure because if I use it initially that brush it's just going to fling it everywhere all in the gears and the chain I don't want it to go in there so you see we've got these big bits here which I'm removing a um, bit of a boring job and you need a new brand new razor blade when you do this so what that's done now is that's Though it hasn't got it all off, it's softened it right up. Um, what I shall do now is just go around there with the rag and some brake cleaner, and that should wipe right off. 
Just a bit of brake cleaner on the cloth and you can see that now. That's wiping, wiping straight off. That's a soft wire brush that we got in that whizzy wheel there. Um, you don't want to go too heavy, especially on the aluminium, because it just starts tearing the alley up. Um, and as I say, all we're doing is we're just loosening it up, really. Just enough for us to wipe off. The thing is with, with the black silicon that we use, it's of paramount importance that you get both surfaces extremely clear of oil, because you put that silicon on to oil, or if there's oil on the surface, all it does is just, the oil just tracks past where the old oil is and the silicon doesn't actually stick to anything. So that's why you've got to make it very, very dry of oil. So just putting a nice thick line of silicon around the one face. I just find it easier to do it on the cover. And then what we do is we just double up around the bolt holes. Don't need to put it on both faces, just the one face. So the cover sits on, it's not on dowels, but it sits on this stud here and these two up here. So when we tighten these little six mil bolts up in a minute, gradually, you will see the silicon sort of come out the outer edge. Um, and it's going to do the same on the inside, but not excessively. But because these are a bit of tin, even from standard really, when they're not sort of a little bit warped, you best to have enough silicon on there really to stop them from weeping. In here, you've got a gasket there where the water pipe comes out of, um, but you don't put silicon on that. That's just a, a steel gasket with uh, rubber on the inside and the outside, so that's what seals that. It's a little bit like the rear main seal where it's a dry seal. Just doing these up very, very loosely. It's just a little bit quicker than doing it by hand. You can see the silicon start to squeeze out the outer side. And just all we do is we nip, just nip these up. Don't go mad. I bet you find it a little bit weird, John, don't you, all this filming? <laughs> so there we go. And there we go guys, job done. All right guys, so you can see Paul over there, he's just sorting out an engine which he's taking back. Now, you're probably wondering where that engine's come from. It's an Alfa Romeo, I believe it's a two litre. And this is the reason, one of the reasons really why we've got him working here, because we know how good he is. Um, he sort of took over from his father. I don't know whether I've mentioned in the past that Bob Dove, his father, um, has specialised in these old Alfa Romeos for years and years. He used to do a lot of racing back in the day or be members of teams and what have you. He's got his own business now. He's took over from his dad and he rebuilds these Alfa Romeos. Um, does a lot of competition ones, road ones. Credit where it's due, guys. These boys do know their Alphas. Um, Bob's been coming here for as long as I've worked here. And um, yeah, probably 20 years now. And obviously I've seen Paul and his brother growing up. Um, but they really do know what they're doing, so credit where it's due. If you guys need an old Alpha engine, give us a shout and um, we'll, we'll put you on to Paul, Bob Dove Motorsport. Um, so yeah, let's go and have a little look, see what, um, what this engine is. I think you've been to the dyno yesterday with it. And you got it dropped off here last night. All right, Paul, nice to see you here, mate. I love um, it here, mate, I love yeah, it. I know you do. <laughs> Um, so this morning, I've just explained to everyone that you've got your own business doing these Alfa Romeos, took over from your father. Yeah, so me and my brother took over from my dad, or taken over from my dad to start of the year. Um, and we're just obviously building the engines now. Dad's still around helping us, but we're trying to primarily make it our business and make it a little bit bigger. Right, so what's, what is this and what spec is it? And so this is two litre Alfa Romeo engine, twin cam, eight valve. It's a fast road spec, um, so it's got a ported head in it. It's got fast road cams. 
It's got 10 and a half to one compression ratio pistons. Um, but other than that, it's fairly standard. It's still on standard, obviously crank bearings, rods. Um, so this one yesterday you took, you took on the dyno, is that right? Yeah, so we did, went to Launceston, uh, went to Mark at SRD, um, and he dynos engines for us, and we obviously there with him. Um, we set the carbs up and we set the ignition system off, on, up, sorry. So that's, a, that's not a normal uh, point distributor, that's a one, two, three star dizzy, which you can program. Right. So okay. you can program the ignition timing values into it. Yeah. Um, and then you can obviously change the ignition timing where you want in the rev range rather than having a preset of a point distributor. Okay. So you, the benefit of that is obviously you can get a better power sort of bands and such. Yeah. Um, and you can get a nicer torque figure. So it so. does make quite a bit of a difference. Uh, yeah, it? they're a bit of a pain in the ass to set up. I mean, the, these new ones are easier because you can get, you can download the app on your phone and just do it on your phone. So you literally sit there on your phone oh, okay. just changing the timing. Um, but and is it a costly conversion that? I can't remember how much they are. They're a few hundred quid. Um, but once you get them set up properly, yeah. they do work. Okay. So they're half decent. Um, we're on 40 DCOEs here with 32 more chokes. The originally the customer had problems with it running, wasn't running properly. Right. Um, and they had like 150 main jets in it or something stupid like that. Is so this we, before you built it? Yeah, yeah. So he, he had problems with it running, it would run for a bit and then set up in a misfire. Um, and then run properly for some reason. Took it to quite a few people and they couldn't sort it. I think we found the problem being um, the needle valve size was too small. Right, so okay. it was basically running out of fuel. It, it couldn't fill the bowl, you know, the float bowl inside it up quick enough. Yeah. So we've gone up a size um, and that seems to cure the problem. So what was happening is you, you could hold the engine at 6,000 revs on the dyno yeah. for five, 10 seconds. And then the, um, it would start to lean out and misfire. You oh, can see right, on the okay. AFR. So we've changed those and we've gone down a jet side because what people were doing, put bigger jets in to compensate. Oh, right, okay. So we've gone to 130 jets and 150s. And then the idles have gone to F9 just to sort of bring a crossover between the main and idle, jet, idle jets. Um, you know, a, a nicer crossover because it's a fast road engine. Yeah. You want, you basically want to power in the mid range. Oh, okay. You want a nice crisp mid range. Um, rather than high up in the top end. Right, okay. You could put bigger carbs in this and make more power at the top end, but yeah. it's no point because it's not a race engine, basically. So basically it's what, standard head ports? Uh, no, the head's been ported. It's yeah. a nice head. Um, the valve guy's been shortened for extra lift for the cams. Yeah. They're, quite, they are, they're a fast road cam, but they're, they're about 11 mil, 11.8 mil lift or something on the cam. Oh, okay. So they're quite, duration's not so big. Oh, it's a long, sorry, but. Um, so what term, you, you dynoed this one yesterday. No problems at all? No, so the only problem is we're just setting this up yeah. um, and then just getting the carb set up. So it made 161 horsepower, 141 foot, uh, foot pounds of torque, which I'm really happy with. Yeah. Customers what sort of power would you expect from something like that, though? I was thinking more 150. So to see oh, 161, right. I was, I was 150 happy. sounds like a lot to me. I was happy. Um, these are about 125, 130 standard. Oh, are they? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite Al a big. Alpha claim 132 from standard, but they're not. Not from the. That's what it said in the 60s. And this. No. So, um, oh, very good, mate. So you're gonna, what are you doing now? You're, um, you say you're gonna drain the oil and? Drain the oil out of it, um, bolt a few little bits onto it, and it's gonna go on the pallet off to the customer. I do. Customers can be happy. Very nice, mate. Well, thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Until another one, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Oh, and thank you very much for your emails. Always a big help. I do go through them, as I've said to you before. Um, if I don't reply, it's just because I get so many um, and I haven't got enough hours in the day. But yeah, thanks again, guys. Until another one, you take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.